In the last video, we looked at arithmetic sequences. In this video, we're going to look at arithmetic series. A series is the summation of a sequence. So we're simply adding the terms up. Let's write out an arithmetic series. We might, for example, have 3 plus 7 plus 11 plus 15 plus dot, 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 and so on and so forth. So this is an example of an arithmetic series. We're summing the terms. We've got a first term, A, which is 3, and a common difference, D, which is going to be 4. We can say that the sum of n terms is going to be equal to A, the first term, plus A plus D, which is going to be the second term, plus A plus 2D, which is going to be the third term, plus A plus 3D, which is going to be now the fourth term, right the way up now to the nth term, which is seen as A plus N minus 1 multiplied by D. Clearly, there must be a more efficient way of doing this. And the way in which we sum an arithmetic series with first term A, common difference of D, is now the sum of N terms is N over 2. We have 2A plus N minus 1 multiplied by D. This is given in the formula book. Sometimes we might use the formula S sub N is equal to N over 2 A plus L, where A is the first term and L is the last term, or if you like, the nth term. We know the nth term L is given as A plus N minus 1 D, so we can see the connection between the two. If I substitute in L is equal to A plus N minus 1 D, we get to this formula right here. What we're going to do in this video is look at deriving the formula, which you might be asked to do in an exam, and then look at working through some basic examples of summing n terms of an arithmetic series. So let's go ahead and start off. In question 12, part A, we're asked to show that the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series with first term A and common difference D can be written as the sum of n terms, or S sub n, n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. All I'm going to do here is write it out manually. So the sum of n terms will be the first term plus the second term, which will be a plus d, plus now the third term, which is going to be a plus 2d. And then we're going to go right the way up. Now, if we look at the penultimate term, this is going to be a plus n minus 2 multiplied by d. And then we'll have the final term, which is going to be a plus n minus 1d. To show the proof of this, we simply write this out again. This time we write it out backwards. So I have a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. We're going to have now plus a plus n minus 2 multiplied by d. And then we will have now all of the other terms in the middle. Then we'll have a plus 2d. Then we'll have now a plus d. And then finally, we'll have plus A. If we consider adding these together, we can do S sub N plus S sub N. So adding, so S sub N plus S sub N, we're going to get 2 S sub N. What this is going to do is give me now on here, we're going to have this quantity plus this quantity, which is going to give me 2A plus N minus 1D. If I add these, we're going to have A plus A, which is 2A. I've got n minus 2d plus 1d, which will be n minus 1d. So what we end up with is 2a plus n minus 1d. We'll have another one of those, and we'll have another 2a plus n minus 1d. And these will continue for n lots of this. So just writing these out, 2a plus n minus 1d, and so on and so forth. So what we have then is the following. We have 2s sub n is equal to n lots of 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. And then to finish off, we simply divide by 2. s sub n is equal to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 d as required. So all I've done is simply written out forwards, written it out backwards and added them together. We're simply now looking at this one, so that one plus that one, 
we're looking at that one plus that one. We've got now all of the ones in the middle together and then we end up now just simply finding a partner for each of these and we'll end up with n lots if we're summing n terms. In part b it says show that the sum can also be written as s sub n is n over 2 a plus l. We can say on here now the following. So we've got the sum of n terms. So sum of n terms is n over 2. We've got a plus l. L is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. Therefore, we can write now the sum of N terms is equal to N over 2. We've got A plus A plus N minus 1 D. So we can say now the sum of N terms is equal to N over 2. And we can say 2A plus N minus 1 D. Now, I've done it that way round. Um... You might want to go the other way around. You might want to write this here. You might want to say the sum of n terms is equal to n over 2. a plus a plus n minus 1d. And then at this stage you can say now that l is equal to a plus n minus 1d. And we can say therefore the sum of n terms is going to be n over 2. We will have on here this value right here. We'll have a and then we'll have this one right here, which is going to be L. So you can write it forwards or you can write it backwards. I think that's slightly cleaner um, as we're getting to that from the original. But we simply got to show that the nth term is A plus N minus 1D. So that's for derivation. You may or may not be asked that, but it's important that you know it um, and can prove it just in case. All we're going to do now is go ahead and look at finding now, in this particular question, question 13, the sum of the first 10 terms of the following arithmetic series. So all we do is the sum of n terms is going to be n over 2. We've got 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. I'm not going to use the a plus l method here because we don't have a last term. As suggested in the last video, we collect the information using a, n, d, s and l. a is the first term, so we can see that's going to be 4. n is going to be 10. We want a common difference. Well, if we look, it's going up by 3 each time. And now we want the sum of the first 10 terms. We find three pieces of information to find the fourth. Exactly the same. So subbing in, the sum of 10 terms will be 10 over 2. That's n over 2. 2 lots of a, well that's going to give me 8, plus n minus 1, that's going to give me 9, multiplied by d, which is going to give me 3. So what do we have? 10 over 2 is 5, we've got 27 plus 8, which is 35, so what's that going to give me? 175, so we can say the sum of the first 10 terms of that particular arithmetic series is 175. Don't be tempted to manually sum it because you'll be asked a question where it simply isn't going to be an option. OK, let's look at the next one. A, N, D, S and L. So remember, A is first term, N is the number, D is the difference, S is the sum, L is the last term. So A is going to be 5. Again, N is 10. Won't always be 10. That's just what the question's asking. If we look at the common difference, this is now being uh, reduced by 2.5 each time. So the difference is negative 2.5, or as a fraction, negative 5 over 2, and we need the sum of the first 10 terms. This is a non-calculator uh, question, so you might find it easier to work in fractions instead of decimals. So the sum of 10 terms, n, well that's 10, 10 over 2. 2 lots of a, well that's going to be 10 plus n minus 1, well that's going to be 9, multiplied by negative 5 over 2, or negative 2.5. So what do we get? That's going to give me 5. Then we're going to get negative 45 over 2, and then we've got 20 over 2, so that's going to be negative 25 over 2. So we end up with negative 125 over 2, and that is the sum of the first 10 terms. You can see here it's going to start getting negative very quickly here and all the terms after the third one are all going to be negative, hence why the sum is going to be negative. So that's what we get. Okay, let's look at this one. A, N, 
D, S and L. Well, A, that's 1 over 6. N, again, 10. If we look at the difference now, that is going to give me 1 over 6. That's 4 over 6. That's 7 over 6. So we can see that the difference is going to be 3 over 6, which is going to be 1 half. We want the sum of the first 10 terms, and I found that information. Once we got three bits, we can find the fourth. So the sum of the first 10 terms is going to be now n, 10 over 2. Two lots of a. Well, 2, two over 6, or 1 over 3, plus n minus 1, which is going to be 9, multiplied now by d. d is 1 half. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 5. So that's going to be now, uh, we'll switch these up into 6s, I think. So that's going to be uh, 2 over 6 plus, that's 9 over 2, so that's going to be 27 over 6. So what do we get on here? We've got now 5 times by 29 over 6. So what's that going to give me? 145, so 145 over 6 as, in, uh, as a, a fraction. So it's handy to be on top of your work with fractions, um, and we just simply plug in. Okay, question D. Given the sum of the first 12 terms of the sequence p plus 2p plus 3p plus 4p plus so on and so forth is 156, find the value of p. So a, n, d, s, and l. Let's collect the information. First term, p. If we look now, we said told the first sum of the first 12 terms, so n is 12. If we look at the difference, the difference, p, 2p, 3p, 4p, well, the difference is simply going to be now p. If we look at the sum, we're told that is 1, 5, 6. So all I'm going to do is use this right here and plug it in. So we know that the sum of n terms is equal to n over 2. We've got now 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. So we can say 156 is equal to n. Well, that's going to be on here, 12 over 2. We've got two lots of a, so that's 2p, plus n minus 1, which is 11, multiplied by d, which is going to be p. So what have we got? 156 is going to be equal to 6 times by 13p. So what's that give us? 156 is equal to 78p. So we can see 156 divided by 78, P is going to be 2. So all we've done is subbed in. We've got now our information and we go ahead and solve for the value. Okay, so that's question 13. Question number 14. Find the number of terms in each arithmetic series below. So let's just write out the sum of n terms is equal to n over 2. 2a plus n minus 1d. Let's collect the information. So on the first one, a, n, d, s and l. So a, that's 3. We're looking for n, so we'll label that n. We've got now d, d is going to be positive 2. The sum is going to be 80. So substituting in 80 is equal to n over 2. 2 lots of a, which is going to be 6, plus n minus 1, multiplied now by d. d is going to be 2. What we've got here is a quadratic in n. So we're going to have to solve this and consider now which is the valid solution. If I do this now, I'm just going to multiply through by the half. That's going to give me now 3 plus n minus 1. So multiplying through by the half. 80 is going to be equal to n, then we're going to have n plus 2. Um, so we'll set this side to 0. We've got n squared plus 2n minus 80. Looks like we can factor this. Uh, what are we going to have? n plus 10. So n plus 10 and n minus 8. So we can see that n is going to be equal to negative 10, which it can't. We've got n equal to 8. Therefore, n is equal to 8. We can't have negative 10 terms. Okay, let's do the next one. We've got a, n, d, s and l. So a is going to be negative 1. n we're looking to find. d is negative 4. The sum is equal to negative 66. 
So we can say the sum is negative 66, and that's going to be equal to n over 2. We're going to have 2 lots of a, which is going to be negative 2, plus n minus 1 multiplied now by the difference, which is negative 4. At this stage, we could run negatives through, entirely up to you. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Negative 66, multiplying through by the half, that's going to give n. We'll have negative 1. And then we're going to have now minus 2 lots of n minus 1. So just tidying up, we've got negative 66 is equal to n. We're going to have now on here, uh, what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 1 minus 2n. Another quadratic in n. So we're going to have 2n squared minus n minus 66 will be equal to 0. So what we need to do is look at factoring and solving this particular quadratic. That looks like it should factor. Uh, what are we going to have on here? Uh, what have we got? 2n plus 11 and then we'll have n minus 6. Let's just tidy that up slightly. 2n plus 11. Uh, in fact, let's just get that back. We want that. So 2n, I think it's going to be, and I'll just check that this does work rather than me guessing. 2n plus 11, and then we're going to have n minus 6 is equal to 0. 2n squared minus 12. Uh, what's that going to give us now? Minus 12n plus 11n minus that looks good. That looks like it's going to work. So n can't be equal to negative 11 over 2 because n has to be an integer and positive. Therefore, n is going to be equal to 6. So we solved the quadratic to go ahead and find that. So nice and logical and relatively straightforward once we can access that. So there we go. Brief introduction to arithmetic series. In the next video, we'll work through a range of questions developing on this, but we simply use a formula, plug in the values to find the unknown.